Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and today we're going to find out if non-locking knives are actually worth it. Let's check them out. Now I think for a lot of us, when we think of a non-locking knife, the tendency is sort of to think of an old school slip joint, the stereotypical granddad's knife. Whether it's a case knife or maybe even a Swiss Army knife, they're all great stuff, but they're not the latest and the greatest. So what else is there out there today that doesn't have a lock? Now I am gonna show you some slip joint mechanism knives here, but they're nothing like that granddad's knife you may be thinking of. And the first one is from Spyderco. And I really think they sort of, they may not have been the first, but to me they're the ones that sort of helped seriously popularize the modern non-locking knife. And this is their UK pen knife, which is the design that helped launch that movement. This comes in at 63 bucks at this point in time, and what's cool about it is when viewed from the side like this, it looks like just like any other modern Spyderco knife out there that probably has a lock, but this is, in fact, a slip joint mechanism, as you can see. It also features one of those signature Spyderco design elements, particularly the finger choil right here, that really kind of boils down to the heart and soul of why this knife is great. Now, when you talk about the differences between slip joints and locking knives, if you like the, the kind of hassle-free and simple to use nature of a slip joint, that's definitely its advantage. But a locking knife tends to have the safety advantage. But the finger choil here kind of closes that gap a little bit and brings a little more safety to this design. Reason being, in a standard grip, you're not even necessarily gonna be choked up, just a standard grip, your index finger is gonna be there in that choil. So even if you're working something and the blade happens to disengage and slip past the joint on that back spring, your finger is going to be there to keep the blade from actually closing on your fingers. That way you can enjoy the great Spyderco ergonomics without having to worry about a locking mechanism. We've got a three inch blade here. This one's made of BD1 stainless steel and it's made in the USA, which is quite nice. It's under three inches and you've got kind of that signature Spyderco leaf shape with a full flat grind and the blade itself is nice and thin too, thinner than a lot of the knives they make. So this really is gonna be a great slicing knife. It's also gonna work well for piercing because of course you have that nice acute point and you're not gonna to have to, at least I wouldn't really worry about piercing with this knife in terms of a safety standpoint because again, you've got that, uh, you've got that finger choil there and the back spring itself is nice and strong. As far as the walk and talk goes, we do have a nice half stop along the way here, which is another excellent safety measure. And as you can see, it snaps in quite nicely. Got FRN handles with a square pattern. Spyderco's deep carry wire pocket clip, which is reversible for either side, means it carries nice and unobtrusive too. Pull it out when you need to cut something and you've still got one hand opening too, which is something most slip joints, or at least old school slip joints don't. You've got that signature Spyderco opening hole, works quite nicely. So if I had to sum up this knife, uh, in kind of one statement, it's everything that makes Spyderco great in a slip joint. It's got everything you want from any Spyderco out there. Now the UK pen knife series has definitely had a lot of influence, uh, even within Spyderco's own lineup. They've got like their Urban Lightweight is kind of a shorter version. You've also got a blade shape inspired by the stretch knife. Uh, but apart from that, other companies have kind of picked up that ball and kind of played with the style of genre that uh, Spyderco ha helped innovate, including this Kaiser, which is called the Zip Slip. Now there's two different tiers of this knife. This is a Mike Vagnino design. They started about 69 bucks and those come with G10 handles and an N690 blade. But this particular one is one of the fancier versions. It has a uh, titanium frame, as you would expect, and S35 VN steel. The blade on this one also comes in under three inches, but you have a bit of a more traditional drop point profile going on. Flat ground, opening hole here, which is a little bit on the smaller side, at least compared to the Spyderco but it's still easy to open. I find I, it works best for me if I do the little uh, pinch grip between the middle finger and the thumb to get it started and then finish it out. Walk and talk, as you could tell while I was doing that, is pretty good. It's a little bit on the stronger side, which is good for safety, uh, but it does make it a little bit trickier to open uh, with that smaller hole there. But like I said, it is still manageable. You've got that full size finger choil here as well. So you have that same degree of safety built in there. And you've also got a really nice amount of grip to this titanium handle because of this radial milled pattern they've got going on. As far as carry goes, you do have a deep carry pocket clip as well, but it is right side only, and it is nice and deep carry too. It really buries in there quite nicely. Now, one of the other nice things about this zip slip is it has what they call an ever flush back bar. 
On most slip joints, when you go to close the knife, this leaf spring at the back is actually gonna lift up a little bit. That actually doesn't happen on this one because they got some kind of trickery going on underneath there where the, uh, the actual back spring itself is actually sitting underneath this outer piece. So it's kind of a cool, a cool thing there. Now, interestingly, the Spyderco I just showed you, the back spring also doesn't stick up. I'm not sure why, because I know they don't use the exact same technology there. So if you happen to know, let us know in the comments. All right, so, so far we've looked at sort of the archetype as well as a fancier version. You can also get a more heavier duty work version. And that comes in with this Boker Plus. This is the Chad Los Banos XL drop slip joint. Now there is a smaller XS drop version of this knife, but the XL comes in with about a three and a half inch blade. And it starts at uh, just 72 bucks right now, or just over 72 bucks. Because you've got a broad G10 handle here and a little bit more weight than these other two knives, it definitely has an extremely sturdy feel in the hand. And because you've got that great finger choil right there, it gives you that added degree of safety. And really, I would feel very confident putting this into some true heavy work. As far as steel goes, we're 440C, really classic drop point profile to it, and a hollow grind that keeps the edge really thin. The walk and talk is not quite as snappy as some of these other knives, but when you go to open it, it really does lock into the open position very resoundingly. I shouldn't use the word lock, but you know what I mean. It kind of snaps into place very, with a very strong feeling. The thumb studs, of course, make it really easy to open that blade, and they're out of the cutting path of the edge as well, so they're not going to get in the way. With the G10, you've got a really solid anchor, and you've got a real classic folded pocket clip here rather than a uh, more unobtrusive deep carry, and that is reversible, of course, for both sides. Even with my slightly larger than average hands, there's plenty of grip on here, even without using that finger choil. As you can see, I've got all four fingers on the main section of the grip, and I've got a whole extra finger length when you go up to the choil. So even if someone out there has some really big hands, this is a very broad choil, you're gonna have no problem hanging on to this knife. All right, next up, I've got something from Rick Hinderer. So you've got kind of the big production companies of the world doing uh, more basic and fancier versions and some of the more uh, kind of custom quality uh, production houses out there like Hinderer do some nice stuff like this XM18 slip joint. Of course, it is based on his XM18 flipper, has kind of a similar vibe going on, but it is housed, of course, in this nice slip joint shape. No half stop on this particular one, just a strong single action back spring. These start at 275, they are made here in America, but what really sets these apart is the thumb disc right here. As you can see, it is mounted from the top, but it's actually repositionable or even completely removable if you'd like. You have this slot along the top of the blade, you simply loosen the screw up here and you can move that up or down until it's at just the right spot for you to make it easy to open one-handed. As you can see, it works quite nicely, even when it's further back along the, uh, along the spine there. And I've got it right here so it keeps it out of the path of the blade again for usability. The blade on this one is his Spanto shape or Spanto shape comes in 20 CV stainless steel. So nice premium edge retention and you've got a black DLC stone washed finish going on. What I like about the slip joint versions of this uh, knife especially is the blade stocks tend to be on the thinner side. Obviously these aren't big heavy tactical knives that you need more lateral strength on. So it's really nice that they really concentrated or really made the choice to give you a thinner blade for better slicing efficiency. Apart from that, you've got G10 handles. These ones are blue, although there are other options. Repositional pocket clip for tip up or tip down carry. And of course that's a standard hinderer pocket clip. So there's all kinds of uh, custom and aftermarket uh, or uh, secondary pieces you could put on there if you like. All right, that's all for the true slip joints I've got to show today. And as you can definitely tell, nothing like the, uh, the slip joints of yore. But this knife, next two actually, are kind of uh, gonna be a transitional phase between the slip joint and the next style of knife I'm going, going to show you. This is the SOG Terminus, which may be a little more famous right now for the XR locking versions of this knife. But before those came out, this actually was a modified slip joint design. And the reason I say modified is the retention is essentially the same uh, in terms of its physics as the standard slip joint, but instead of having a back spring, they've milled a cutout into the liners itself, so the liners themselves are acting as that traditional back spring. Now, before I show you more on this knife, I'm going to show you this next, which is the Spartan Blades Nymph. Uh, and these are discontinued, and we only have a couple left, but the reason I'm showing it to you is this also uses that same type of mechanism. It's just more visible because they don't have scales over it. You can see as I push that blade down, those pieces of the, uh, the liners essentially 
are popping up just as your standard slip joint back spring would. But back to the Terminus. They start at uh, 53 bucks right now, which is not bad. You've got CTS BD1 stainless steel, just under three inches, and you've got that nice straight clip point profile. What's cool about it too is there's a bit of a nice touch where you've got contrasting grind lines. You've got uh, horizontal lines, or sorry, uh, vertical lines on the hollow ground portions and horizontal lines on the flats, which is quite nice. Even though there is a flipper tab here, it's not actually a flipper tab. When I close it back up, you can see that disappears out there. But what that does, when the knife is open, it may not have a finger choil, but because of that flipper tab, there is a little bit of safety built in right there, which is quite nice. But they have tuned things quite nicely, so it actually does take a fair bit of force to actually get past the detent and close it. And as you can see, no half stop when I went to close here. Deep carry pocket clip again, brown G10 handles, and that clip is reversible uh, for either side as well. All right, now for the transition into the other style, and I've got the ZT-235. And although ZT and a few other companies have kind of been referring to these as slip joints, I don't really uh, consider them to be true slip joints because there's no back spring at all. You've actually got two detent bars that kind of pinch in from the handles, and that gives you a little bit of a detent when you go to actually close the blade, and that holds the blade open. The reason I'm starting with ZT is I think their 230 model has kind of really kicked this style of, uh, of mechanism into high gear. Kind of like how the uh, Spyderco's UK pen knife kicked the modern slip joint into gear. The 230 to me is kind of the, again, not the first one out there, but kind of the one that kicked that genre of the double detent non-locking knife into gear. But I think the 235 is a better knife. Comes in at 180 right now. You've got a uh, about 2.6 inch blade of 20 CV stainless steel full flat grind and a sort of modified Warncliffe profile, although they are calling it a spear point, so that's the way you'll find it on our site. So not only do you have good edge retention, you've also got a stone wash finish here on the blade, which is gonna help hide your scratches and it's gonna make the knife look good even after a long time. Carbon fiber handles keep the weight down, you got a nice blue aluminum backspacer to kind of set things off a little bit, and a really nice deep carry pocket clip that's actually mounted from the inside of the handle. So it is reversible, you can do left or right side carry, but you don't have to worry about any extra screw holes from the outside. It keeps it nice and clean looking. Now one thing I'll say about a double detent knife versus a slip joint is they tend to be a little easier to close, and that also happens to carry through into actual use. It can be a little bit easier for the knife to close accidentally, so be more careful when you're using this style of knife. And the blade shape on here does do a little bit to mitigate uh, that issue, because if you're actually piercing with this knife, the force is tending to push at a diagonal angle towards the back of the spine, so at least the pressure is going in the right way. As long as you're not going too crazy with it, it's probably gonna be all right. But on the flip side, you've got something that ZT's been able to take advantage of, is there is a bit of a fidget factor to these that a traditional slip joint do just does not have. If I've got the knife open, with just a little bit of pressure at the right spot on the spine, I can actually flick the blade closed too. So for a company like ZT, of course, being very well known, for their flipper knives, which of course have a great amount of fidget factor. The fact that they were able to incorporate that into a non-locking design is pretty cool. All right, next up we've got another option from Boker Plus. Uh, this one starts at 67. This is the Kansei Matsuno Wasabi front flipper. Now Kansei's full customs, of course, are phenomenal. So it's really cool to see some of his designs coming in at such a really good price point. Now this is a double detent design, and in order to give you an extra degree of safety here, they've actually taken a page out of the, uh, the friction folder book by giving you a bit of a protruding tang heading back here into the handle itself. That way, when you're going to actually use the knife, if it does disengage, you don't have a finger choil here, but the pressure from your thumb is gonna keep that blade in the open position, exactly how it would on a traditional friction folder. But there's some nice touches going on here with this knife, especially when you consider the price, again, just under 67 bucks. You've got 440C steel, but you've got a horizontal finish, which kind of mimics a hand rubbed uh, finish, which you usually only see in custom knives. And there's even a bit of a compound grind here. It's really subtle. You can just see it, uh, see it shift right there, but it's really nicely done. And of course, a nicely crowned spine as well. So that's nice and comfortable when you're using the knife. The handles on this one are Coca Bolo, although G10 in black is also available. That's a few bucks less if you'd rather have that. But I really like the uh, the kind of warm, good looks of the Coca Bolo, and that kind of helps it tie in better to Kansei's full customs as well, which tend to use some wood materials. You do have a single position pocket clip, 
I'll go ahead and close the knife up here. The other thing about this is there's a bit of a fidget factor here too, because you've got a front flipper mechanism formed by the tang of that blade. And you do have to make sure you keep your fingers out of the way since that front flipper is going to swing around, but you can flick that blade open quite nicely. All right, next up, I've got a design by Serge Panchenko, which is made by Fox. And we've got the Gen 2 Bean. Again, they're calling it a slip joint, but this is actually a single detent folder rather than the double detents we've been looking at so far. This one is a bit on the smaller side. We've got a just over two inch blade, but again, it's got sort of a, uh, a sheep's foot profile. So if you're piercing with this, the force is gonna be pushing back towards the spine and give you a little extra degree of confidence there. A few different versions are available. You've got some standard kind of handle options as well as the zebra wood here, which I think looks really cool. And those are all the same price coming in just under 45. Steel is 440C again, you can also Flick it closed, even though I messed it up there. It can be done, believe me. And you've got a nice uh, opening hole there to rotate the blade open. And even bigger fingers like mine are having no problem with it. Single position pocket clip lets you carry it easily on the right side. Not really a good keychain knife because there's no good attachment point, but it is going to fit nicely in that watch pocket in your jeans if you like, or just as your primary everyday carry. All right, next up, I've got the Leong Ma Traveler, which is actually made by Riot for Leong Ma. And this is another double detent design. It's a little bit of a bigger uh, and a bit more stylish blade, I'd say. These start at 275. There are a bunch of different versions of it. You've got micarta handles, uh, some orange G10s with different color inlays. This one right here, we've got black G10 with a carbon fiber inlay. Blade length is under three inches. We've got M390 steel, nice full or high flat grind, and a few different blade shapes. There's a uh, sheep's foot, as well as a drop point and the straight clip point you've got here. Now this is the first double detent knife we've looked at so far that gives us a finger choil, similar to those slip joints that we've started off this video with. So you do have that degree of safety built in right there. I will say though that the front of these got a little bit thin, so they are a little bit pokey here, even though they do give you that protection. What I would probably do is just round off some of those corners just a little bit with some sandpaper to make it a little bit more comfortable if I were carrying one of these myself. You can flick the blade closed, as you can see, and it had a nice thunk too when it did it. Folds up quite nicely. You can see we've got a deep carry pocket clip with a nice zirconium ball here on the end to give you that retention point. And since it's mounted from the spine, it is very deep carry and you can of course reverse it to either side. There's also here at the back, a really nice uh, hidden lanyard point. You've got sort of a bar spacer here and a really wide cutout behind it. So you'd have no problem threading even some thicker cordage behind there. So you can put a nice fob or accessory on there if you'd like. As far as opening goes, you've got essentially uh, two small fullers on each side, which act like a traditional slip joint long pull, if you know what I'm talking about. Makes it real easy to pinch that blade open and you're ready to go. These all start 275. All right, now the last double detent folder I'm gonna show you is, in my opinion, the king of the crop right now for a few reasons. One, it's the most fidget friendly and it's also the safest. This is the Artisan Cutlery Archeo in our Knife Center exclusive configuration right here. I'll get to those features in a minute, but let me talk about the rest of the knife first. It's just a really nice utility design. The blade, under three inches. We've got a VG10 Damascus going on, so it looks great and performs really well too. And it's even decently priced, especially for a Damascus blade. These come in at just under a hundred bucks. The handles are G10. It's an orange and black kind of topographic look. But what I like about this material, um, unlike a lot of orange and blacks that can be a little bit shoutier, this is a bit more subtle. And in fact, if you're just kind of glancing over it, it almost looks like a piece of desert ironwood, which I think is really cool. Now, when I say this knife is fidget friendly, I really mean it because it is in fact a flipper tab. That flipper tab, unlike that terminus from earlier, is actually usable. So when you go to open the knife, you can flick it open quite nicely. In fact, this whole design started life as a traditional frame lock flipper. Then when you're done using it, you can flick it closed too. It's really addictive to just do that over and over and over again. It's quite nice. So you've got the flipping action, which is quite satisfying. You've also got safety. That finger guard acts similarly to the choil on that Spyderco we started the video out with. It's not gonna close on your fingers if you happen to break the tension. And on top of that, if you want even more safety, you've got it. On the end of this little lanyard that they've included is a small cross pin. You can actually insert that into the frame of the knife there. And now the blade is manually locked open. So it's not going anywhere. You really do have the security of a standard locking folding pocket knife. On top of that, it even works when the knife is closed too. So if you wanna do that, 
you can put that in there and that blade's not going to open unintentionally at all. But all these things come together for me to make this probably the only double detent knife I would personally carry right now because you've got that extra safety, you've got that fidget friendliness. And on top of that, if you want one of these knives, you can only get it from us right now because our exclusive is the only one on the market at this point in time. All right, I told myself I wasn't going to show any kind of slip joints today that weren't kind of more modern uh, types of profiles, but I did have to show just one and I'm going to end this video with the Lion Steel Thrill. Now this is a more simple shape. It doesn't have fancy one handed opening. It doesn't have a, a finger choil for safety or anything like that. But what it does have going on for it is a single piece integral handle. Lion Steel, of course, is really well known for their integral frame lock knives, but they've applied that to this slip joint design right here. And the end result is just really cool. You've got a few different versions. You've got aluminum handled versions with anodized, uh, various anodized colors. Those start at 119. Uh, or one, just under 120, I should say. And you've also got titanium versions, which bump up closer to 200. The blades are M390, really usable drop point shape, just over three inches long with a full flat grind. It's gonna work quite nicely. Got a crown spine as well. Being an Italian knife, a lot of their knives tend to have that kind of feature, which is quite nice to look at and quite nice to feel as well. As you can see here, right at the end of the leaf spring itself, they've taken another trick from their frame locking uh, expertise and there is a steel leaf spring bar insert right there. So that way you've got an actual steel on steel interface so that the uh, harder metal of the blade isn't gonna wear down the, uh, the lock face itself. The walk and talk on these is also quite good. As you can, can see, it snaps in quite nicely. And if all of that wasn't enough to make it cool enough to be worth it, you've even got a pocket clip here, even though you can't see it. Push this button on the uh, one side of the knife and you actually have a retracting pocket bar that as soon as you pull it out of the pocket, pulls flush with the handle so you don't have a hot spot from that. And it's just going to be very, very comfortable to use. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around. These are all the non-locking knives I wanted to show you today. And there's a lot more out there too. Uh, if I were going to show more uh, kind of classical uh, modern slip joints, stuff like the Chris Reeve Impinda would have been great in this video. There's a lot of stuff, but make sure to let us know your favorites down in the comments. In the meantime, if you want to get your hands on any of these cool knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And make sure you're signed up for our Knife Rewards program, because if you're going to buy one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you aren't already. I'll see you next time.